audio diary account is my interpretation of the chronological story behind each user of the audio diary. It is not factual. I believe that the audio diaries were written in a way so there would be multiple valid ways of interpreting them. How's it going everyone? I'm Town Cave and today I'm going to present my interpretation of the audio diary account of Sullivan. Sullivan was Ryan's head of security, and Ryan trusted him to take care of anyone that threatened Raptor. This meant that often Sullivan had to resort to some pretty cruel methods. However, Sullivan was used to cruelty as he recognized it as a necessary means of enforcing justice. Or at least that was the case until 1958. In that year, Sullivan was given an assignment that caused him to seriously reconsider what the word justice really meant. After Ryan recognized what a threat Fontaine Futuristics happened to be to Ryan Industries, he was determined to bring it down. Fortunately, he soon discovered evidence that suggested that Fontaine may be in league with the smugglers. This presented the perfect opportunity to eliminate Fontaine. However, Ryan first needed concrete evidence of Fontaine's illegal activity, so he ordered Sullivan to obtain it. When Sullivan receives Ryan's order, he can tell that Ryan meant business. Soon after Sullivan began investigating, he discovers that an employee of Fontaine Futuristics named Timmy H is part of the smuggling ring. Unfortunately, he's unable to obtain any evidence that Fontaine is a smuggler as well. However, Sullivan's cruel mind has an idea. Instead of discovering evidence that could convict Fontaine, maybe he can be given evidence instead. In the meantime, one of Sullivan's colleagues inquires Sullivan on his progress in the Fontaine investigation, as it's a difficult case to investigate. Sullivan is busy investigating at that time, so he leaves an audio diary to explain his current activity. Now the eggs are in the scramble. We picked up Timmy Yates right after midnight. Either Ryan will be taking down Fontaine, or Fontaine will be taking down Ryan. We'll be uh, interviewing poor Timmy Neath Fontaine Fisheries. If you're up for entertainment, the code's 5380. Anyway, before the entertainment begins, Salvan sets up an audio diary to record any useful information that Timmy H may provide. Mr. Ryan asked me personally to make this clear to you. You give us Fontaine and this whole filthy ring of his, and you'll be knocking back pints up at the Friday McDonough's. But if you prefer to play the mule, What's that? Change of heart, Timmy? Timmy, ready to talk now? Go on, Sullivan. Go on to your journey. Whatever Ryan thinks he can do to me, Fontaine can do double! Unfortunately, the entertainment wasn't good enough to get Timmy H to talk. Sullivan ends up killing Timmy H before he can get any useful information out of him. Sullivan was so frustrated with his efforts that night that he didn't even bother bringing the audio diary back with him. Sullivan continues his investigations into Fontaine the, from the next day, but one day he receives another message from Ryan. Ryan asks him to come to his office. Sullivan believes that Ryan is going to scold him for taking too long to discover evidence against Fontaine. However, that didn't end up being the case. But still, when Sullivan exits Ryan's office, he has a shaken look on his face. When one of his underlings notices this and inquires Sullivan on his worries, Sullivan doesn't want to speak of it at the moment and asks him to come meet him later on at the cocktail lounge in Fort Frolic. Later that day, Sullivan's underling arrives in the cocktail lounge but finds that Sullivan has already left. However, Sullivan left an audio diary for him. I worked the meatball beat in Little Italy, and even I'm shocked at the cold blood that oozes out of these artistic types. This broad cold pepper and that fruit job Cohen are in some kind of feud, and Cohen's looking for my security detail to pick sides. The next thing I know, I'm called into Ryan's office to talk about the whole mess. Goddamn nut job artists. Basically, what happened is that Sullivan was given another assignment when he was still in the middle of the Fontaine investigation case. Normally, an officer is supposed to finish one case before moving on to the next. However, Sander Cohen is anything but normal. He doesn't care about formalities or procedures. It makes sense for him to randomly turn up in Ryan's office one day and demand that he kills Culpepper. 
Remember, this is a time which Fontaine's popularity was threatening Ryan. Culpep was publishing songs critical of Ryan, so in a way, he was contributing to his steady downfall as well. Ryan did initially try to argue with Cohen about how Rapture was supposed to be a city where the artists will not fear the censor, but eventually Cohen won him over. Cohen succeeded in convincing Ryan that removing a threat before it bore fruit was a great idea. I mean, Ryan didn't do that with Fontaine, and currently he's on his way to becoming the number one businessman in Rapture. However, Ryan also knew there was going to be difficult to murder an innocent artist in Rapture. That's where Sullivan comes in. He's Ryan's head of security and has plenty of experiences with such matters. He has also been serving Ryan loyally for years, so keeping quiet about an unjust murder wouldn't be too much of a problem for him. Ryan believes that he's got the right man for the job. However, Ryan didn't want to just call him into his office and instantly tell him to murder an innocent. He wanted to take things slowly, so he decided to have two meetings with Sullivan. In the first meeting, he only spoke of how there was a feud between Cohen and Culpepper, and that his intervention may be necessary to end it. In the second meeting, Ryan explained exactly how Sullivan's intervention can end the feud. After Ryan was done talking, Sullivan was shocked. He was so shocked that he didn't say a word when he went with his men to play pool down in the Ferris Fortune later that day. He knew that his men were going to ask him what the problem was, so he recorded an audio diary to do the talking for him. I just got the word to put the bump on Anna Culpepper. This isn't some gangster or hard-nosed political operative. We're talking about a dizzy twist what wrote a song or two that got under Ryan's wig. Sullivan had no problem torturing or even killing people who he knew were guilty. That's why killing Timmy H wasn't a problem for him. But killing an innocent person? That's something Sullivan had never done before. The very idea horrified him, it shook him, and it really made him question whether Ryan deserved his loyalty. Despite these doubts, Sullivan's loyalty eventually won over. He killed Culpepper. However, right after killing her, his guilt won over. He wanted someone to punish him. He wanted everyone to know that he was the one who had murdered Culpepper. That's why he decided to leave an audio diary expressing his guilt. done with Culpepper. I left her as she was in the bathroom. I seen she had a blanket half knitted by her bed. It was nice, you know, black and red real pretty. So I took it so I could, you know, have somebody finish it so it could be of use to someone. It just didn't seem right to leave it lying there. After Sullivan reports that his assignment in Fort Follick had been completed, Ryan orders him to return to his investigation on Fontaine. However, Sullivan returns with a guilty conscience. This new mentality causes him to take a deeper look into the people he's investigating. It's not long till Sullivan discovers that not all the smugglers are as evil as they seem. When Ryan built Rapture, he was only thinking about men earning the sweat of their brow. However, he forgot that there can't be winners without losers. Everyone in Rapture was a genius, but a society full of geniuses is still a society of competition. Some businesses are going to succeed, and some aren't. Those people that don't succeed become poor. However, they aren't stupid. They just aren't as intelligent as others, but they're still very intelligent nevertheless. That's why these poor people felt cheated by Ryan. That's why they decided to join the smugglers. They had no other way of earning their livelihood. This is what Sullivan discovers. He realizes that even Timmy H may have been an innocent, and Sullivan himself treated him like an animal. But that's not the end of his discoveries. It's not long until Sullivan soon discovers evidence that proves that only the smugglers at the top of the ring were truly evil. These sad saps. They come to Rapture thinking they're gonna be captains of industry. But they all forget that somebody's gotta scrub the toilets. What an angle they gave me. I hand these mugs a cart and a bowl of soup, and they give me their lives. Who needs an army when I got Fontaine's home for the poor? When Sullivan hears this, he's infuriated. Fontaine was taking advantage of the poor's weakness to get a smuggling ring working. While Sullivan had his reservations about some of the smugglers, 
his mind didn't change a bit about Fontaine. Later on, Ryan requests an audio diary to report on Sullivan's progress. Before sending it, Sullivan made sure to inform Ryan of the truth behind the smugglers. I'm closing in on the whole ring. I'd pat myself on the back, but let's face it, these aren't exactly bloodthirsty desperados we're talking about. Rapture's full of poets, artists, and tennis players, not hired gorillas. But this leader of theirs, this Fontaine, he seems to know his way around the grift. He keeps his nose clean, but not so clean that the right people don't know he's not to be trifled with. After Ryan receives his audio diary, he notices that Sullivan has grown softer after murdering Culpepper, and this causes him to worry. He fears that Sullivan may let his new soft attitude get the best of him. Ryan firmly believes that Fontaine needs to be eliminated at all costs if Ryan Industries is to remain at the top of the great chain. He needs to make sure of that. But how can he do that if his head of security is growing softer? What can he possibly do? Well, the penalty for smuggling still hasn't been decided yet, but now Ryan believes he has an answer. At the next council meeting, Ryan decrees that the penalty for smuggling should be death by hanging. This ends up being a controversial decision, not only in the council, but outside it as well. When Sullivan hears this, he's very disappointed. He just made sure to tell Ryan how all the smugglers were in bad people in his previous audio diary. Yet Ryan still decided that all of them should die. It's not long before Sullivan prepares an audio diary to protest. Hanging now, is it? That's what we've come to? Now look, I don't make the laws here, I just enforce them. But I didn't come to Rapture to string men up for running contraband. If Ryan and his crew have their law, then they can have my badge. Despite the backlash, Ryan doesn't change his mind. Sullivan decides that he's going to retire soon, but first, he needs to deal with Fontaine. He almost has all the evidence he needs to convict him, but he knows that Fontaine is going to put up a fight. He needs to get one of Fontaine's men to provide him with intel on how Fontaine will be planning to defend himself from his impending arrest. Ever since the death penalty was announced, all the smugglers became terrified. They thought that they would be losing their lives any day. This is why it wasn't too difficult for Sullivan to find a smuggler to bribe into betraying Fontaine. The Irish pork pie offered me a deal. I flip him Fontaine and I walk out of here. That simple. How do I know that fat fuck isn't Fontaine's guy? How do I know they're not all Fontaine's guy? Fontaine's got Adam and everybody wants it. Brian's got a whole lot of talk and a nice suit. Even down here, any idiot can see which way the wind is blowing. Wilkins was initially undecided if he should betray Fontaine. However, Sullivan told him that he would ensure that Wilkins got to live if he did so. Wilkins was so scared of losing his life that in the end, he just told Sullivan everything he knew about Fontaine's forces. Sullivan kept true to his word and made sure that Wilkins was never executed in the future. However, this was pointless in the long run because Wilton's betrayal of Fontaine haunted him until it drove him to insanity. Anyway, after hearing Wilkins' word, Sullivan decided it was a time to put an end to Fontaine. Defeating him took a while, but eventually Sullivan was able to take Fontaine's life. Or so he believed. However, this isn't the end of Sullivan's worries. Right after the death of Fontaine, Ryan made another controversial decision by nationalizing Fontaine Futuristics. This move causes a rebellion that is led by the rebel Atlas. Sullivan wanted to hand in his badge by now, but Ryan kept urging him to stay a little bit longer. Sullivan tried to be patient with Ryan. He tried really hard. Or at least that was the case until he was given an order that shattered the last specks of loyalty he had in him. Ryan orders Sullivan to place a genetic lock on all the bathospheres in order to limit rebel activity. By now, Sullivan is really beginning to see why so many people rebel against Ryan. He decides to carry out this final order, but decides to leak some confidential information regarding the lockdown in the hopes that Atlas and his rebels may discover it and use it to their advantage. Bathospheres in lockdown until further notice. Ryan had us install some kind of genetic device into the thing, so only Ryan and his inner circle will be able to use them without dispensation. <laughs> but the boys tell me the keys are pretty unreliable. 
sisters, cousins, anybody in the ballpark genetically will be able to come and go as they see fit. After leaving this diary, Solomon decides it's time to end his life. He can't continue working for Ryan, he can't mount his own rebellion either, because most of his men are still loyal to Ryan. He can't join Atlas and his rebels, because plenty of them probably have a grudge against him for being one of Ryan's associates. So what can he do? Kill himself. Ever since Sullivan had murdered Culpepper, her ghost had haunted him every day. He tried to make amends, he tried to find someone who could finish the half-knit black and red blanket, but he failed. He tried to see to it that only the top tier smugglers were executed, but he failed. The only thing he could offer now was his soul. The end of Sullivan's life marks the end of his audio diary account as well. Thank you everyone for watching. Next time I'll be presenting the audio diary account of Diane McClintock. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day.